Hey folks, welcome back to Mark Kelly Farm. We're out in the shop today. We're officially opening the Mark Kelly Butcher Shop tomorrow for the season. We're going to uh, process some chickens, but we need to do some stuff in preparation. So come along with us and we'll show you how to get ready for that. So until now, I've never processed more than a handful of chickens, and we never really needed equipment to streamline the process. But tomorrow, I think we're going to do like 15 birds. So I'd like to have a little bit of equipment because I think it's just going to be uh, Kelly and I doing this. So the first thing we need to do is make some dispatch, dispatch cones. And if you've never processed chickens before, it's a cone-shaped open um, apparatus that you put the bird in upside down with the head sticking out the bottom. And then you can dispatch the chicken while it's being uh, held uh, firmly around the outside. And that gives them a calming effect when something grabs or kind of hugs the outside of an animal. Sort of like Temple Grandin, if you've ever watched that movie. If you haven't watched that movie, you need to watch it. It's really good. So we priced some cones. They don't even actually sell them here in, in our town. But looking on Amazon, they're wanting like $40 for one cone. And again, I feel that's ridiculous. So we're going to make our own cone. I looked up on uh, YouTube how to do it. Found a couple different designs. And... We're using a little bit from all those designs, but like I always do, I try to make things better. And I think I've came up with a superior design than what you will see most everywhere else on Facebook. So let's show you how to do it real quick. We purchased a couple buckets, five gallon plastic buckets. You can get them at Ace, you can get them at Home Depot, Lowe's, Tractor Supply, wherever. They all have their buckets. And most of them are food grade buckets. If you look on the bottom, I think they'll be like a little number two. It means they're food grade. They, cut, they can come with lids. I didn't get the lids because I didn't need them. But uh, just get you a couple buckets unless you already have a couple buckets laying around. Um, the chickens won't be um, food grade ready when they're in these buckets. So you really don't have to sanitize them or anything like that. They just have to be sort of clean because the chickens will still have their feathers on and everything else. So after you get your buckets, take, put it on a flat surface, and I use my square. Just throw your square against it, draw you a straight line right down the middle, and I line up with the middle of the handle, because I'm actually going to hang them with this handle, so I want that to be in the center. It doesn't matter which side you do it on. Once you get your straight line, measure six inches across both ways. Um, it kind of helps to turn your tape measure upside down. So like make a little pencil mark at six inches on the back of the tape and it'll roll around the corner each a lot easier. And then once you got your six inches, draw a line, put your tape measure on here backwards, kind of hang the tape. What I did is put it like this. I hang the tape measure upside down here and I keep the tape upside down here. That way it follows the curve and then line it up both on the six inches and this center line here and then draw you a line right along that tape on both sides of this center line, six inches. Once you do that, we are going to cut the bottom out of this bucket. And you can see it's indented a little bit. The bottom actually starts right here. So we'll get our little sawzall thing that we got. We're going to cut all the way around at this intersection right here where you can see that dark line. And then we'll come back and we'll cut right here and right here. And then we're going to do something fancy up here, we'll show you.
Now, if you don't want to have one of them fancy little one-handed saws, any one of these pieces of equipment right here would work just fine. Even like a rotary cutter would work just fine as well. So anything uh, similar to that, you could even use a like a, a rip saw or cross-cut saw like a wood saw would work. That would work just fine. Now even if you have one of these like a little dovetail saw, you can see I cut it real easy with this. This, just a little hand saw, dovetail saw, works just fine too. Cut like butter. Now what I'm doing, I just got this little razor knife right here. Just come along the edges real quick and just take those little burrs off. They'll come right off. And then that'll make your job a lot easier later. The next thing you want to do is you want to take your framing square or anything else that's about an inch and a half wide, a two by four would work, and lay it on the outside edge like that, and then draw your line an inch and a half from the edge. What we did is we just rotated it over here on the table and laid it down, pushed it down flat. That works good. So now we have that line. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna clamp it in our vise over here. We're gonna take our saw that we used to cut this. And we're gonna cut these ribs all the way down to the bucket. This one here is hollow underneath, all the way down to there. And then we'll take our saw, we'll come through this way and then cut these ribs off. So this will be completely flat all the way. We'll show you how to do that. You see, we've cut these lips off right here, smooth them out a little bit. We're going to take our razor knife again, clean all that up, clean all the little burrs off, which will make it a lot easier later. And then this is going to overlap this all the way down. We'll put some clamps on it to hold it. We've got our bucket clamped together right at that line, all the way across. We've lined up these ridges up here on the top. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our drill and we've got a drill bit the size of the zip ties we're going to be using. So I'm going to come up about one inch from the bottom. I'm going to go three quarters in. Remember we have an inch and a half overlap. So I'm going to go three quarters in and I'll do drill two holes three quarter inches apart to do the stitching. And we'll start at the bottom and we'll just work our way up. Okay, we got our holes in, so we want to come down through the top, making sure that the flat side of your zip tie is towards the middle. So go through the first hole, and then you're going to want to come back up through the second hole, like that. And then we're going to put our zip tie together, like this, and then we're going to shove this back one all the way down like that, and we're going to tighten up as tight as we can, and then rotate it while you pull tight, and that cinches it up. And then we're going to take our cutters, and you just clean that up, cut that off. Now we're going to come up about an inch, and we're going to do another hole, three quarters in from the edge, and then a second hole three quarters from that, and do it again.
have another zip die. Get strong zip dies too, a little bit tougher. You can get some really thin ones, but they're not going to hold up. And then inside, and then back up through that hole again once you find it. And zip it up nice and tight. And then pull it forward to snug it. My OCD makes me put all these the same way. So we can take this clamp off now because this is fastened and we'll just continue up. So there we are. It's like sewing plastic pretty much. And then we put these on the outside so we have a nice smooth surface on the inside. All we got to do is go in here and take these little burrs off from drilling. They come right off generally. Just got to pull them off. And then there you have your dispatch cone. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take our saw and we're going to cut this piece off right here. And then we'll take some sandpaper and smooth that out so everything's nice and straight. You remember Herbie the Elf from uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer children's Christmas cartoon? The one, the elf that wanted to be a dentist? Kind of looks like his hat, I think. What do you think? Hmm. So there is our dispatch cone. That's what she looks like. Pretty clean fabrication. We can still use this handle and we'll show you how we're going to use this tomorrow. So here's what we're going to do here. I'm just going to park the tractor here close to where we're going to do it. And then I'm just going to hang it on the bucket here of the tractor. I can use whatever height I want. Uh, if Kelly's using it, I can make a little lower. Uh, that's about the right height for me. So that's going to work. Another thing you could do would be to drill two holes up here, like one here, one over here, and then mount these to a board or maybe like a two by six. You could do maybe a hole here and a hole here. And mount those to a board and then screw that board to like a big post or a telephone pole or something like that or like our big telephone pole over there would work now if you're going to do a bunch of chickens i would recommend putting some kind of uh, catch bucket underneath because uh, that'll be quite a bit more blood that you want to deal with but with 15 chickens i'll be able to get the hose over here and hose this off and it'll be fine. Now let me go over some of the other equipment that uh, we've got lined up for tomorrow. I've got a couple old rabbit cages that I borrowed from uh, my neighbor Carl. Those are going to fit in the back of the pickup and we'll haul the chickens here in those. We have my big homemade uh, propane burner base that I made years ago and I got my big 50 quart pot on here and then we're going to use this pot to scald the chickens with uh, I believe you want to run your water around 145, but if you're serious about knowing how to do this, tune in to our next video and we'll go over it in a lot more detail. I purchased uh, some rain slickers. So I'm going to be using a hose a lot tomorrow and it's going to be cold and I don't want to get my clothing wet. So I bought the, uh, the bib overall tight. Probably won't wear the jacket, but this will keep my chest and my, my legs from getting all soaked. And I'll wear my muck boots underneath that so we're not going to get all wet. Now I got our burner set up in here because if there's any wind tomorrow, we'll close this door to where you can just walk through. And that'll keep the wind off of this burner and blowing this burner out. Because after it comes to the temperature, we're going to have to turn the, uh, the fire way down. And when the fire's low, if it gets any wind underneath there, it blows it out. Plus, um, I want to keep my honey Kelly warm. So... I'm going to have the wood stove going over here in the shop, so if she gets cold, she can come over here and cuddle up to that wood stove and warm up every now and then. I made me a stick, a pusher stick out of an old, um, like a handle for a hoe or shovel or something like that that I had laying around. So you can push the chickens down in the pot, because if you dunk them with their feet, the feet don't get in the hot water like they need to be. So once they're in the water, this lid won't be on here. She, 
uh, Kelly can just keep pushing those chickens down into the water, flipping them around with this pusher stick. So after you scald the chickens, it's time to pluck the chickens. And we've borrowed this from the same person that uh, we're getting the chickens from. It's a electric chicken de-featherer or plucker. Uh, pretty neat design. It used a plastic uh, food grade barrel, like the kind that water and stuff comes in. And then he made a wooden frame, mounted a motor to the wooden frame with a belt pulley to a big pulley on the bottom. Now I like how he set up the bearing system down here. You can see there's just two pillar bearings or pillow bearings, whatever you want to call them. And he's bolted them down with a shaft going up through. The shaft goes up to the bottom of a disc blade. And the disc blade is kind of concaved on the bottom. And then you can buy these rubber, um, I don't know what you call these, the fingers. And then you just drill a hole. What size hole, I don't know, maybe around a half inch or so. And then these rubber deals pull in from the outside and they pop in. They got this little lip here. So all these little rubber deals you can purchase. So the bottom of this spins, the sides are stationary. So as it spins, it runs the chicken around in here against the sides and all these fingers pull the feathers off and again you'll see that tomorrow um, you got to spray water in here as you're going to kind of wash the feathers down through these cracks and then the feathers will come out on the ground on the bottom make sure you're not spraying water on top of your motor of course i if this was mine i'd put a little guard over the top of that motor so this cord with this motor i put a new end on the cord because the other one was just kind of uh Put on with those little twisty uh, terminal connectors. So I put a new end on the cord for the gentleman. Now he's got a, a foot pedal switch. So when you're ready to turn the thing on after you get your birds in there, you just come over here and click that with your foot, and that starts spinning. And when you're all done, you come back over here, click that again, and it goes off. So that's how that works. And then over. In the barn, in the meat processing area, I have a big stainless steel table. I have a cutting board that goes on top of that table where we'll do the processing. And then we'll probably get an ice chest out here to throw all the processed birds into. It's going to be plenty cold out here tomorrow, like freezer cold. So we, we won't need to worry about them cooling down. Usually you'd want to use like a big 100-quart ice chest or any kind of big tub. Fill it full of ice water. So after you process the birds, take all the entrails out and all that... You want to throw those birds in that cold, cold water to get them chilling down. You don't want to leave them sitting around warm. And then uh, you would dry them out, package them, cut them up, do whatever you're going to do. But we'll go through all that tomorrow again. So hope you enjoyed the video on making our dispatch cones. So till next time, till tomorrow, stay safe, stay healthy. We love you guys. Catch you later.